today's topic is how maps improve the business value of your CRM with a focus on Salesforce. I'm Ulrich Egui, I'm a product manager at Galegio. I'm here today with uh, Olivier Lys. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, Olivier Lys, I'm working for General Electric Healthcare in Europe, and I'm in charge of commercial excellence. On the agenda today, uh, we'll first see what mapping brings to Salesforce. Then Olivier will show us the five maps uh, created by GLF Care. Then the impact it had on, on the team, if these maps uh, have been successfully adopted, and the lessons Olivier and his team learned. Before we get to the heart of the matter, a question we need first to answer is, what does maps bring to Salesforce? At Galizio, we have a lot of customers facing the same issue, which is uh, having a large quantity of data in Salesforce, which makes information difficult to access. As a result, data is not very used or poorly exploited. And for sales, with all this mass of data in, in Salesforce, the, the notion of territory is not very clear. So by displaying all this information on maps, it facilitates operational and strategic management, it helps with decision making, and it also improves business process performance thanks to the geographical component. So let's focus today on G Healthcare and the view uh, Olivier and his team have developed. Olivier, can you tell us more about how they came to be? I'm very pleased to be with you today uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, share the work we have been doing with Gadigio. Um, we started with uh, this company uh, some time ago and in 2015 we were focusing on a, a number of uh, capabilities related to uh, understanding the territory organization and size and how to, to balance uh, territory uh, between uh, different sales uh, teams. And in fact we found that there was another opportunity which is to uh, develop capabilities for the sales persons themselves. And uh, as you can see from 2017, we started the implementation of new capabilities. So uh, giving to the salespersons themselves uh, more capabilities to better identify opportunities, understand customers, uh, getting better and faster access to uh, information in the CRM system, which is salesforce.com. And in fact, uh, we found that this is something that uh, can help tremendously these, uh, these different uh, sales uh, persons. So let me um, share with you some, some maps we've been developing over the time. Uh, there are five maps. We picked a few objects in salesforce.com that were making more sense than uh, others. And in fact, you can uh, localize on the map anything that has uh, an address or is tying to some other information that is uh, actually geolocalizable. And so this uh, first example is in store base. Uh, in our business, we need to look at the uh, system that will be replaced over time, and we need to understand where they are and, and the status of this, uh, this install base. Now, what you can see here, we use color coding to highlight some of those systems to be replaced soon. Uh, we take also uh, some information in salesforce.com to to make it also relevant to the sales team, like Mode IT or salespersons. And we can add as much information we find relevant to help uh, the uh, sales team uh, understand which of these install base is to be looked after uh, and to finally prioritize their uh, sales activities. So it's providing very, very uh, uh, powerful capabilities uh, to make quick and easy decisions. Now, on this map, you can see that sometimes uh, in this, on the sales teams, you need to understand uh, which, which equipment is installed where, and also to understand the local uh, situations, as some customers can be competing with their local uh, neighbors. Having this understanding through maps can be of, of interest. So there, there are a lot of capabilities you have. Uh, on the next slide, we are showing the accounts, and account uh, here can be, and for, for us, will be uh, classified into different categories like private or public. It has a certain meaning for our sales team. And for, um, for the salesperson, for instance, to understand the uh, activities going on each of these uh, accounts, here you can filter on which of those accounts have some 
ongoing business activities, or you can filter by equipment being installed, and so on and so on. So there are a lot of capabilities. There is one tool that we are showing on this map, which is the capability to select a few customers to visit and get some information like details on how much time it will take to go and visit those different customers. That is very powerful. It's clear that you know, our sales team, they all have these tools in their car, but it's also good to be able to take advantage of your computer and quickly identify in during your day, you can visit one, two, or three customers and save time because it's always painful to go and have to go back and visit when you can actually make better plans in advance by having proper information. Now, you can also, uh, with this tool, with this capability, uh, you, you, you can, uh, as you can see, you can put that into salesforce.com calendar, which is something you can do. The other thing I'm not going to demonstrate here, but it's quite powerful, is it's that you have this capability on your computer, but you have the same on mobile devices through Salesforce One. So the same kind of features will show on your mobile phone, for instance, and here you can actually connect with some uh, tools like Waze or uh, Google Maps to decide on where to go and how to go. So it's quite quite easy to use and quite powerful. And our sales team love this uh, capability in uh, on mobile devices. On the next um, map, I'm going to show another capability, which is Sorry, I moved. Yeah, this one. On, uh, on this map is showing opportunities, um, meaning that we are now looking into the sales person's activities that is looking at their current business, and it's actually nice nice to be able to um, to show these opportunities in their phase and status. And and the reason for this is our sales persons never work in isolation, they actually work as part of a team and they need to be able to collaborate with other persons, other let's say, specialties and as a result having this information they can share and see all together is actually quite important. Opportunities need to be worked as a team and they need to be um, uh, consolidated and discussed and with this tool we can, we can actually do that uh, in a quite efficient way. Next slide, uh, it's about what we call customer satisfaction opportunities. So if, if one of the customer is uh, having an issue with a piece of equipment, for instance, it needs to be properly escalated. And of course, it's visible with our service organization. But imagine our salesperson. I mean, this is nice because it is not the one who is actually working directly with the customers, but he needs to be aware. He needs to know what's going on. And with this, I mean, early in the morning, he can just go there and see status for his customers. And if any customer uh, he knows is having a problem, he will know immediately. Now, one thing you I was not sharing before, but you see on this uh, small pop-up, when you click on any of these um, uh, flags, it will open this uh, small window. And that window is actually uh, we're giving you access to the normal information in Salesforce.com just by clicking on the title. Um, and uh, just doing that will give you this other more detailed information. To, it's a window to the information in your CRM. It's not replacing it. It's just giving you a faster and better access to this information. One thing important is, as you can see, it's a link between our service organization and our sales team. And by just sharing the same page, they can better access something they have in common, which is a customer, and it's extremely powerful. It's much better than reports, dashboards, other tools, where the information is really, you know, lost in the middle of this mass of information. So this is quite powerful, having access to this customer satisfaction opportunity. Now, I'm showing the last map. That one is uh, uh, about installation projects. So, installation projects 
is about people collaborating. It's not only about sales, it's sales, application, installation, service, quote and tender teams. You can name all the people involved. I mean, it's a huge organization that can actually coordinate all those different steps in installation projects, having a clear understanding for what's going on and how to make sure we allocate proper resources and time to, to make things happen for our customers. So these, uh, these are a few maps. We designed five maps. And I'm now going to share more about uh, the impact for our teams uh, and benefit of having these tools. Uh, it's true that it's just being installed at this time, so we got some early feedback from the use of this application. But there is a first um, benefit people are mentioning. It's quick and easy to share information. It helps people collaborate across all the different teams. So it's not only a tool for the sales team, it's a tool for everyone. It helps the teams make better decisions and faster. So the, the last two um, bubbles on this chart is really about what can you do with this tool. Actually, you can do things much faster. Our marketing uh, organization wanted to organize a seminar, but they, they just selected a type of equipment and were able to make that decision very quickly. So having this information on a map makes people make better decisions and also in a much faster way. So three, three key factors in uh, making a decision for developing geographical tools. Now, the adoption for, by the users, I think uh, for the majority of users, uh, the adoption is same as the adoption of Salesforce.com. The reason is because Salesforce.com is actually complex and people do adjust gradually to what is becoming available to them in Salesforce.com. So that's, that's the first part, the majority of users. The adoption is good. It's also related to overall adoption of the capabilities we are offering today. For some dedicated teams, like uh, the installation team, the service team, and a few other teams that see the way this information can help them make better decisions, the adoption is very quick and, and fast because it's, it's really helping them make, make better decisions. And that is actually, I think, changing the, their working methods. Okay, so that's for the mm -hmm. adoption. And we did a quick survey. Um, we have a very high rate of satisfaction. Uh, and back to the three points I was mentioning, but it's a faster and better access to information and really sharing with your neighbors uh, in different functions, uh, that, that is much faster and easier. So people found this uh, quite uh, neat. One, one key benefit of this application, it's really simple and intuitive. So it's not like you need a big training and you will allocate to only a few persons. Now it's something easy to use and um, people were happy with the capabilities they had to better see and share the information. So uh, going to um, this, I, and which is also the last page of this presentation, um, the development uh, itself was handled with the agile methodology, trying to have a quick feedback from users so we could decide on the next generation of features. So it was like having a first workshop in collaboration with Galileo, setting some priorities, developing the application, deploying it with the users, and getting some feedback. And this too has to be as short as possible, so then you can uh, iterate uh, a couple of times, and then you know that the application is working fine. So this is the way we've been developing this application with, uh, with our team. Ulrich, I will stop now. Um, oh, thank you. Mind for some <laughs> questions. Um, but first, Olivia, I have, a, I have a question also regarding the maps. Um, so you showed us the maps you developed in 2015 and 2017. So what about the maps that you actually plan to develop uh, in the in this year or next year? 
Um, okay, that's a good question. Uh, well, there are a few other maps we can develop. Uh, we have some interest in being able to show uh, how to better allocate uh, demo equipment. Uh, so mm -hmm. demo equipment are equipment we use for some of our uh, flow business. And being able to identify those equipment to uh, demonstrate where and when and um, and make the and reduce the distances you know like uh, instead of having the equipment to travel long distances to visit two customers um, so we can we can make better decisions on how to allocate those uh, those uh, those uh, demo equipment so that's something that um, we can do better with uh, this um, with this application um, and uh, yeah, there are more more ideas. Uh, to be honest, there are many. But uh, yeah, and the, the one thing I like to be able to do is to uh, navigate uh, faster and better across the views, having access mm -hmm. to some quick actions. Okay. I also have a, another question asking if Galileo is compatible with Viva as well as Salesforce.com. Yes, um, since we are listed on the App Exchange, Galileo is fully compatible with any like any other applications from the App Exchange with Viva. So you can install Galileo even right now, um, both on Salesforce and both on, on Viva. Is there anything else you wanted to, um, to, to add, Olivier? Um, one thing very simple. I, mm -hmm. I think uh, Galileo application is, uh, is easy and, and intuitive. I, I think it's really uh, neat because uh, uh, keeping this application uh, as performant, as simple to use is really uh, uh, nice, especially when you have so many um, analytics capabilities um, in the background. So I, I think it's really nice. And mm -hmm. the compatibility with uh, mobile devices is also quite yes. important. And I think this is uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, good. So I think that's it. I think we have uh, answered all the questions. So thank you a lot, Olivier, uh, mm -hmm. for this webinar today. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.